Hi, I'm Raiz Muhammad, founding partner of RM Warner Law. We're an internet and e-commerce law firm. And today I wanted to talk to you about what you need to know when you are launching an e-commerce brand. And one of the reasons why we thought we would do this video is because we have clients come to us all the time when it's way too late in their venture. Oftentimes it costs them a lot more money and it's a lot more burdensome to resolve their e-commerce related issues compared to if they had come to us to begin with. So what we wanna do is create a little mental checklist for you on the top things you need to know when you are launching your brand. So how do you know if you are an e-commerce business and how do you know if you should be paying attention to this video? Well, number one, e-commerce is a very broad topic. Anyone who's doing business online, whether it's advertising online or selling a product or service online would be considered an e-commerce platform. People are doing this now through Instagram. People are doing this through TikTok. People are doing this through Spotify. People are doing this, of course, through their own websites. Of course, the juggernaut, Amazon, eBay, you name it. So you can have your own platform, website, your own app, or you could be using any number of social media platforms to engage in marketing or the sale of a product or service. That includes every industry you can think of, it includes the automobile industry, beauty, cosmetics, music, widgets, accessories, the list goes on and on. Essentially anything that you can market or sell online, including professional services like lawyers. So if you're engaged in any of those products or services or in the industry of selling or marketing online, you need to pay attention to the legal requirements of what you need to do before you launch your e-commerce brand. First, the most important thing is to make sure before you launch your website that you have your terms of service and your privacy policy buttoned up completely. I can't tell you how many times clients come to us with some bland, overly generic, or even worse, terms that they ripped off of somebody else's website. And those are meaningless. Remember, your terms have to speak to your functionality. That means they have to tell the user the do's and don'ts of your website. The FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, has taken the position that terms of service really operate like a disclosure statement and a contract. It's a contract between your platform, your company, and your users. And you have to tell them exactly what you do on your platform, what your refund policy is, what your advertising policy is, and of course, what your privacy policy is. And once again, with privacy policies, they can be very statutory specific, state specific. For example, the CCPA, which is California's most draconian privacy statute. Do you need to comply with that statute? What are the requirements? Or how about the GDPR, if you have European users or if you're collecting European user information? So there's a lot to this, and I feel really bad for clients who just copy the terms off of some other platform or app. Just not good enough. Fortunately, when you come and you work with us, we are going to cater to you and give you stitched and customized terms of service so that you can make sure that you sleep peacefully, that those terms are very specific to your product and to your brand. I wanna talk about a few key provisions for an e-commerce brand in your terms of service. One of the most common provisions that is disputed is your refund policy. So again, complying with the FTC, complying with the dropship requirements, whether that's even legal is questionable, and letting a user know exactly under what circumstances they would be entitled to a full or partial refund is a key part of your terms of service. Another issue that you need to cover in your terms of service that we see a lot is how disputes are resolved. You can customize and tailor your own alternative dispute resolution process, which means the user has to come to you first before they can file a lawsuit or complain to some other third party. You wanna bind them into a reasonable and simple dispute resolution process. And if push comes to shove, you wanna compel your users to an arbitration process so you can skip litigation. And even better yet, you wanna waive a jury trial right. And in most jurisdictions, that is enforceable. But again, these are all provisions that you have to customize according to your product or service. These are not terms that you'll find in any bland or off the shelf product. Also relating to your terms of service is your privacy policy. Your privacy policy has to be very specific to what you do with your user's information. That means how you collect it, what means you collect it with, and of course what you do with your user data. Do you sell it? 
Do you do promotional advertising with your user data? Do you create customer lists? Do you advertise to them? Do you upsell to them? All of that needs to be discussed in detail in your privacy policy. And like I mentioned before, certain states and certain foreign countries have even more specific policies if you collect their citizens' information. The CCPA under California is one such example. And the statutory damages and fines for non-compliance are significant, significant enough to shut you down. Or how about the GDPR in the European Union? Again, you don't necessarily have to be selling to a European user. You may come across or aggregate an EU user's information without actually performing a sale. So you need to know exactly how to comply. Otherwise, you risk getting hit by an EU fine or even getting litigation against you in the EU.